In this episode, we are going to see the procedure of designing and setting out of transition curve step by step. So far, in our previous episodes, we have seen the elements of different types of curves and characteristics of different types of curves. Using that, we have derived many formulas. Here, we will see how we are going to use that knowledge and adopt those formulas step by step. The designing and setting out of a transition curve is the cream knowledge of the survey engineers in highway projects. We try to give that cream in just 13 minutes from now. So, please watch till the end to get complete knowledge of transition curves. The links of our previous episodes related to curves are given in the description. If required, please check that links. Welcome to Civil Guru. These videos made in different languages. Please choose your desired language from our playlist. If you like this video, please like and subscribe now and share it with your friends. Thank you. In this episode, we will see how to design a transition curve. We will start from scratch. This means we will see how to design when there is no data available. First step is finding the deflection angle delta. Extend the straight line of roads coming from two different directions. Find the intersection point and measure the deflection angle directly from the field. This is named as delta. Second step is apex distance. Measure the apex distance from the intersection point to the shortest distance of the proposed road which is going to design now. Third step is calculating the radius of the proposed road by using the deflection angle and apex distance. That is, apex distance equals r into secant delta by 2 minus 1. Now, r equals apex distance by secant delta by 2 minus 1. Here, we must remember that most of the countries have some limitations based on the nature of their country land and their local traffic. So, we must check that the arrived value of radius here shall be more than that limitations. The fourth step is Based on the radius arrived above, we have to check that the superelevation is required or not. According to my personnel experience, the superelevation is not required if the radius of the curve is 900 meters and above. However, we have to check that with our local regulations. Now, we will see how to calculate the superelevation. The formula to find the superelevation is BV square by GR. Here, B is the width of the road. V is the design speed of the vehicle in meters per second. G is the acceleration due to gravity. And R is the radius calculated just above. If super elevation is not required, then the transition curve also not required. And we may go for designing of simple horizontal curves. Now we will assume that the super elevation and the transition curve is required. And we will go further to design the transition curve. The next fifth step is we have to calculate the length of the transition curve to implement the super elevation and to introduce the centrifugal force gradually. The formula to calculate the length of spiral curve LS equals V cubed by alpha R. Here, the V is the design speed of the vehicle in meters per second. R is the radius of the circular curve. And alpha is the rate of change of radial acceleration in meters per second square. Now, we have to calculate the rate of change of radial acceleration. The formula to calculate the alpha equals 80 by 75 plus 75 percent of V. Here, V is the design speed in kilometer per hour. The 75 percent of the design speed is considered for mixed velocity of the traffic. Based on the design speed, the value of the alpha will be between 0.5 tilde 0.8.
however, the Department of Transportation in every country may consider a fixed value of alpha. Now, the sixth step is. We have to find the value of shift. Because, this shift value helps to calculate the total tangent length of the transition curve. The formula to calculate the shift is L square by 24R. Here, the L is the length of spiral curve. And R is the radius of the circular curve. The seventh step is. We have to calculate the total tangent length to fix the tangent point. We already knew the formula to find the tangent length in simple horizontal curve is TL equals R into tan delta by 2. Here, we have to add the shift value of S along with radius R to get the exact radius of the combined curve. And along with that, add the extended transition length also. That is L by 2. So, to find the exact tangent length, TL equals R plus S into tan delta by 2 plus L by 2. Now, we can measure the tangent length from the intersection point and fix it as tangent point on the road. The eighth step is finding the value of delta S. The formula to find the delta S equals L by 2 R. Here, we may notice that, the length of spiral, L is, in meters. And, R is the radius of circular curve, that is also in meters. So, the value arrived by using this values, will be in radians. To convert this into degrees, multiply with, 180 by pi. That is, delta S equals, 180 L by, 2 pi R. Now, the value is in degrees. Now, let us calculate the value of delta C. The delta C equals, delta, minus, 2 delta S. The ninth step is, finding the total curve length. We already knew the length of the spiral curve at both sides. Now, we will calculate the length of the circular curve LC by using this value of delta C. Formula to find any curve length equals pi r. To find the curve length for this segment, multiply with delta c by 180. Now, lc equals pi r delta c by 180. To find the total curve length, add the length of spiral curves at both sides. Finally, the total curve length equals pi r delta c by 180 plus 2 ls. So far, we were deriving the formulas for designing purpose. From now, we are going to derive the formulas, which is going to help in setting out of transition curve. The tenth step is finding the value of alpha to find the location of common tangent point. Alpha is the angle between the original tangent line to common tangent point at tangent point 1. According to characteristics of true spiral, the value of alpha equals one third of delta S. There is an another formula also available to find the value of alpha. That is 573 L square by 60 RL, which is in degrees. Along with this, let us calculate the value of beta because this will help to get the direction of common tangent line. Beta is the angle between the common tangent line to tangent point one, a common tangent point. Again, as per the characteristics of true spiral, the value of beta equals two-thirds of delta S, or equals two alpha. Eleventh step is finding the polar length or chord length of common tangent point from the tangent point one. That is denoted as B. The formula to find the value of B equals three R sin two-thirds of delta S. Now, let us fix the common tangent point. Twelfth step is. Find the rate of change of radius in true spiral. That is a constant value. 
and it is denoted as k. The formula to find the k equals square root 3 br. And the 13th step is to fix the intermediate point of the spiral curve, we must calculate the polar length of the intermediate points. That is, the chord length of intermediate points. The formula to find the intermediate chord length, b equals, k square root sin 2 alpha. Here, we must know that, the value of b must be calculated for every intermediate point individually. And, we must measure this distance, from the tangent point to the intermediate point every time. Finally, the 14th step is, finding the formula to calculate the angle of intermediate points in circular curve. We have to recollect our memories from our previous episode of circular curves. The formula to calculate the intermediate angle of theta equals 1718.9 LC by 60R. Here, the LC is the intermediate curve length of circular curve. And we have to measure this distance from the intermediate point to intermediate point. Not from the tangent point every time, like spiral curve. Now, the setting out of the transition curve becomes easy. Set up the instrument at tangent point 1. Align intersection point and fix the instrument reading at 0. Assume the intermediate length of spiral curve. That is, LS1. Now, calculate the value of alpha 1 and B1 and fix the point 1. Similarly, for LS2, find the value of alpha 2 and B2 and measure the distance of B2 from the instrument and fix the point 2. Repeat the same until we reach the total length of spiral curve. Here, we have to check the last alpha value must be equal to one third of delta S. Now, shift the instrument to common tangent point. Focus the in instrument to tangent point 1. And, set the reading at 0. And, rotate the instrument, until we reach the angle of 2 alpha. This position is, the alignment of common tangent line. If possible, fix a reference point at both directions for future references. Now, reset the instrument value at 0. Assume the intermediate circular curve length. That is LC1. Now, calculate the value of theta1 and measure the distance of LC1 from tangent point 1. And fix the intermediate point 1. And for LC2, find the value of theta2. And measure the distance from previous point and fix the point 2. Repeat this same procedure until we reach the total circular curve length. Here, we must check, the value of last theta must be, equal to, half of the delta C. Again, shift the instrument to tangent point 2. And, do the layout of the spiral curve, as we have done previously. If you like these videos, please subscribe now, and share with your friends. And also don't forget to press the bell button. Thank you.